Thank you so much and welcome to another installment of Unfiltered with Oscar So Me today. I'm with the doctor, Dr. Mtebu, that's Tabitha Mtebu of the Blue Clinic. Uh, she's going to give us a little bit of an insight into exactly what it is that uh, she does in this clinic. She's a, she's a doctor and uh, I guess this is a big honor for Unfiltered with Oscar So Me because it's the first time that we have a person who's uh, so learned. It's actually very exciting and uh, we're at her home today and uh, she's actually welcomed us very nicely. Doctor, how are you today? I'm fine, <clears> fine. <throat> Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for allowing us to come and visit you today. It's actually going to be an exciting one because uh, the doctor is um, a doctor in all rights, as of course it would be. But uh, what's really exciting is that uh, she specializes in uh, male sexual health. That's what you do, right? Yes, that's my interest. All right. Now, what we're going to do with uh, the unfiltered today, because uh, what we usually do is actually showcase what people do in their businesses and in this case the Blue Clinic is your baby and that's what you started but before we even get to the operations and what the Blue Clinic does what I want us to go back to is um, the person that you are like Utabile, who is Utabile in your own words? Utabile is a mother, Utabile is a doctor, Utabile is a family orientated person, Utabile right. is a Christian mm -hmm. Utabile has special interest in male sexual health right. I spent most <coughs> of my career, I think the past 10 years if yeah. I'm correct doing urology. So right. I worked in a urology department. Mm -hmm. So I develop a lot of interest in mm. not just male sexual health, but in male health in general. Exactly. But I had particular interest in male sexual health. You know, the next question, obviously, that one would obviously want to ask is, why, doctor? Why did you choose to specialize in that? Besides the fact that you're already in the field that deals with that, like you did say urology. So in the fact that you ended up choosing to, uh, to go through that field and do it specifically, what was the cause of that? From varsity, I realized with males, male health is actually one thing that we just tend to shy away from. Right. The community has this thing of, um, our males have to be strong, mm. males have to, they always have to be the backbone of everything, and no one really takes care of our males. And obviously, like, that uh, that would actually give rise to Umujos Lisa going through depression. Yes. Because obviously, if I cannot vent and tell the next person what I'm experiencing as a man because I'm expected to be strong, that's going to come back and hit me one way or another. Yes, that's true. And, and another important thing is mm. that majority of males, they die earlier than females. Oh, yeah, of course. They die about 10 years earlier. So yeah. that's why in most families, if you see, mm. there is no go but mm. there is no good. Yeah. Because they just tend to die 10 years earlier. Yeah. That shows that if they have medical issues, mm -hmm. if they have issues, they're not attended to. Right. So that's why they have an issue. So you, you, you specialized in this, obviously, when you were working. But you're so young. I mean, you, you're very young. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm just wondering, when you completed your studies mm -hmm. and um, started to work as a doctor, mm -hmm. where was it, uh, where, where, what were you practicing at that moment? Because I think there might have uh, come a point where you were like, I need to start the business now. It's mm -hmm. the time to start the business now. Where were you working and what caused you to actually have that shift of wanting to be independent? I actually started working, I started internship in, I started in Joburg, mm -hmm. not in Joburg, in the East Rand in Gauteng, right. in the East Rand in Gauteng in 2007, mm -hmm. then came back to KZN two years later, yeah. then I've moved around quite a bit in KZN, okay. but I've always been in the urology department, so I've moved from Durban to Maritzburg to Ladysmith, mm -hmm. and eventually came back to Breastside. Okay. I think you get to a point where you realize that you've actually given the system everything you can give. Exactly. It's about time that you, you become also, exhausted. You become exhausted mm. and you don't offer good quality service because you're at a point where you're a bit exhausted. Yeah, and so of I, course you might be limited as well, I'm assuming, it, because when you're working for a department, there's only so much that you can do. And males and sexual health, unfortunately, yeah. doesn't, you know, the state doesn't offer much. Uh, yeah, it goes right at the back. It's something yes. that you have to take care of on your own if you yes. have it. So Meanwhile, you, it's a very big problem. Mm, you end up just thing. writing out scripts for patients to buy things. But so it does, it does, it's not personalized. It doesn't really help them. True. That's how uh, the Blue Clinic uh, was born, obviously, right? That's how I ended up opening up the Blue Clinic. Right. Yeah. So, the Blue Clinic, what is it uh, that you guys specialize in? Because I know, Uti, as much as the word says it, the Blue Clinic, and of course, you do mention that it's a men's health clinic, mm -hmm. um, there are things that would obviously bother a man and push a man to a point where they have to come and consult. I'm just thinking of a few high blood pressure, um, maybe you have a low libido or something like that. What are the main things that usually send people to you? Uh, 
I think what most um, in the blue clinic has actually been branded as, as branded as the sexual clinic. That's correct. So we get a lot of patients that mm. come that come into us with sexual issues. Right. So that's that's what I enjoy the most. Mm -hmm. That's what I have passion for. Yeah. So I enjoy that. But we do actually treat males holistically. Right. All conditions that may have issues with you know, mental and, and stuff like that. Then we refer them accordingly if it's something that's beyond our level of, of level of function. Right. But normally we get a lot of people with sexual issues, young mm. people with sexual issues, older people with sexual issues, yeah. and we get a lot of cancers somewhere in between. People screening for prostate yeah. cancer, testicular cancers. We've actually in the past three months that we've been operating, yeah. we've actually diagnosed quite a number of cancers. We mm. get random people coming in for check-ins, what's known as a check check up. Yeah. And we end up up now let me tell you this. There's, there's one that I'm very scared of, and I know Uguti. <clears throat> every man would probably be. Mm -hmm. Well, every man who, who. Let me just leave that up. <laughs> but in any event, yeah. the prostate cancer. Yes. That's the stuff where you have to insert at the back. That's that's stuff that you do. Yeah. You you work with the uh, you work with that kind of stuff, right? Yes. That's where you pick up uh, most of the cancers. Mm -hmm. And I know Uti, that kind of cancer is a very very problematic. For for a while, it was believed to be a cancer that was associated with the of uh, who have come of age. But that has changed all of a sudden. Even Amadaba Nani knew that his bodies can get it. Yes, the prostate cancer is still the disease of the older people, yeah. but the younger people may get it. Yeah. And unfortunately and sadly, when it presents earlier on in life, mm. it becomes a very aggressive disease and they wow. tend to die from it. Wow. But if it may to lagalize at a later age, it's expected, it would yes, expect on it. Yeah. It progresses so slow that it's mm. normally not a big deal. But it's still something to look out for at it's all times. More especially if you have family history of prostate cancer, yeah. you need to have it checked. Yeah, no, I definitely think that uh, is one thing that uh, a person would love to have checked out. But um, obviously, that being just one thing, a cancer is something that you might even receive from um, maybe a family because maybe someone had it, like you did mention. But what I would also be worried about is uh, the kinds of foods. What are the things that a person should look out for, which are um, right at the top of the list, actinium cabin you should maybe try and keep away from because they are one of those things that can lower your, your, your sexual drive. Oh, sexual drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sexual drive is a matter of just being healthy, being at your healthiest. Mm -hmm. The normal food that we know that you should avoid just to be healthy, you should avoid fatty food, yeah. less sugar, because all those foods actually causes diseases mm -hmm. that result in sexual dysfunction. Because yeah. sexual dysfunction most of the time, yes, it can be an issue on its own, yeah. but it's just a marker that your vascular system is an issue, maybe mm. your heart, it's, it becomes a result of that. Yes, it right. just shows you what's happening on your, on your body. So mm. when someone presents with an erectile dysfunction, yeah. it's very important to look at the person as a whole. Because most of the time, there's another underlying issue. That's, that's, where, that's what you need to try and find out. Yes. Because that's what we need to pick up where yeah. the problem is and sort that problem. Yeah. And eventually come back to the erectile dysfunction yeah. and treat that. Lovely. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, Uguti, with that having been understood, there's still a problem with people who have erectile dysfunction and uh, that on its own might be an even bigger problem because it doesn't just end with you having that as your own problem in a marriage situation in a in, in, in any relationship for that matter if a person would have that would, would at least experience that maybe because of the foods that they eat or stress or whatever it is that could cause it why is it always hard for men to say it to the next person or how do they come to you how do they present it to you with a I cannot function anymore, I can't get it up. How do you deal with that? No, no, the first point is that the shocking thing that I've actually seen in the past few years, yeah. more especially the past few months we've been in the Blue Clinic, yeah. is that people who present are actually people who have been sick for years. Oh, shit. It's a matter of they've been sitting on, on it for years, mm -hmm. then eventually someone said something somewhere, yeah. they saw some link on social media that something can be Tell done. Tap on that and then follow. Then eventually find out that there's something that can be done about it. Yeah. It's just such a sad thing that it's it's males are actually meant to feel that the manhood is around sexuality exactly so if you have an issue with sexuality people your, tend your to just morale just fine. drops as well because you you feel like i'm not man enough yes they just pretend for you that everything is fine so that mm. people will actually treat them decently they would that i'm just assuming would that actually be another cause for um failed relationships and failed marriages where a person would have that kind of a problem and then ati because i'm experiencing this maybe let me go and get a girl a, 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 who is different outside and now they're cheating 
and that would obviously cause other problems where it would lead to, uh, to um, STIs and stuff like that. And that's the thing. Most of the time when there's an issue sexually with a the male, mm. they just tend to think there's something wrong with the partner, so they try to find jumps. another partner. Then they realize later, because yes, there mm -hmm. are sexual issues yeah. that come just with the partner. If it's associated with stress, there were yeah. issues, there was cheating, there was whatever that happened, you might have erectile dysfunction that's just specific to one person. Of course. When you move to the other person, it's fine. Mm. So that's the first part people to, you know, start with before yeah. actually trying to sort out the issue. Mm. They will try to find another partner, then they realize that hey, Can I get magic? three partners. No. Get and how worse is that now? Because I'm assuming as well for a person who... Because I want us to get into Isidro, Efa, and Nama, because I Nama, condoms and, and contraceptives and stuff like that. But for a person who's been in a relationship for a long enough time, maybe with one partner, they were comfortable enough to a point where they get to, because it's true. As much as we don't want to admit it, it is very true that when we're in relationships, there comes a point where we think we trust another, uh, each other that, that much, that I don't know. have to use <laughs> the condom anymore. Zone. That, that's the danger zone. Even, yeah. if, even if we trust each other, even if we're honest with each other. Yeah. I think my biggest point here is, you're gonna take that mm -hmm. because I might just think the stress of maybe my wife and I are not okay, mm -hmm. and then I get a side chick. I still want to have sex with them without having uh, using a condom. How is that now? And uh, is that how some uh, STIs yeah. have come, uh, come about? I mean, unfortunately, my STIs, it's always a matter of trusting this one person yeah. while that person is not loyal. Mm. You trust this person and this person is not loyal. Yeah. So that's how my STIs, unfortunately, it gets spread from other different people. There's that loyalty issue. I think I always uh, emphasize this. Yeah. The safest method of not getting infection mm -hmm. is HIV, AIDS, and abstaining. Exactly. The moment you don't abstain, yeah. you are at a risk. Of course, you're already you testing the waters. Risk. Yeah. Because I mean, I can trust you. You with me. You in a relationship with me. But if, for God forbid, for whatever reason, there's that miscommunication, we, 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 we don't trust each other that much anymore, you might assume that I'm doing something wrong and then that might cause you to want to do something wrong to balance the scales. And then of course, you tell Wuti, where was that decision to apply bringing them back in the house? Um, I understand Wuti, Blue Clinic will obviously help you with all of these things. If a person came to you and told you, Wuti, I love my wife, I love having sex with her, but I've noticed Wuti, um, every single time I try and engage in sex with her, I sort of lose interest while I'm in the act, while I'm actually doing it, and I really do love my wife. In the experiences that you've had, the kind of people that have come through to your door, how do they usually present that and how do you help them? Yeah, and first thing is that I want us to work away from the idea that if you have an erectile issue, yeah. it's a matter of attraction. Yeah. It has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of like you have hypertension, you have diabetes, you just it's have a, a condition. Disease. You just have a disease and mm -hmm. unfortunately it's sexual. So that's the one thing that I've been trying to stress. Last month we had like a small campaign yeah. of taking away the stigma and sexual dysfunction. Because yeah. the biggest problem is it's we how don't want to talk. And, yeah. and how we look at them, we view them as there's something wrong with mm. the partner, there's something, people will go as fast losing weight, yeah. it's like gym, mm. they'll put pressure on themselves for the thing they So that they can compensate. But yeah. no, it's not about that. Sexual dysfunctions, mm -hmm. like all other diseases, yeah. are just diseases. Of course. So it's if, just a disease. It's just and a it disease. can be worked on, it can be, it can be treated. Something can be done. Majority of patients, something can be done. There's yeah. like a small percent where we like in struggle, any, Like in any kind of condition. Might, yes. Yeah. And um, quite about with that, um, I don't know, maybe you can bring me to light on this. There are people who are genuinely against using a condom. And they will actually tell you, Wuti, you know, I, 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 how can you eat a sweet that, that is in the wrapper? Yeah. Your advice for these people? Because I know they, they actually know what they play mm -hmm. with fire. But your advice, because I know what you, <laughs> you play with fire sexually transmitted disease unlike in, in the olden days with our parents when a sexually transmitted disease mean, meant getting an injection yeah right now there's hiv mm. there's a lot of hectic sexually transmitted that can kill you. yes yeah. and there's something that most people are not aware of mm -hmm. like it would, it, there is a cancer of the penis oh, and yeah. it's also caused by when you and collect then, yes when you collect multiple partners yeah. yes so that's the thing, which most people will have sexually transmitted disease, yeah. some will actually even have cancer. Mm. So playing around with having sex without a condom, many partners, and even, if, even with one partner. Yeah, even if we 
you always say that if you slept like if you have like a first sexual encounter with yeah. this one person, yeah. that person has slept with five people. Of course. You have slept with five people. Because you always carry whatever you it is. Carry that you carry whatever that you've been exposed to. So you've slept with everyone. Mm. So it's not a matter of just trusting this one person and jumping to bed without protection. It is dangerous. One of the one of those uh, things that would also be problematic is um, testosterone. Mm. I know, Wuti, um, you get guys that go to gym and pump on that. Um, that is supposed to give us an extra oomph. Mm -hmm. Does it? Testosterone, in moderation, if it's on the higher side of normal, yeah. it makes you a man. Yeah. Basically, it gives you the boys, it mm -hmm. gives you the muscular structure, it puts fat in the right yeah. place. Yeah. Sexually, it puts you in the <clears> right place. Of course. But the abuse of testosterone, which is. Like, with, like with any other thing. The abuse of testosterone is dangerous. Yeah. The fit guys, the message you mean, most of them have sexual They look nice. Yeah. They look nice, but it doesn't work. <laughs> most of them, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, so, so you sacrifice. They sacrifice for the look. <laughs> There's, and, the, and the sad thing is that it doesn't only cause sexual issues. Yeah. There's a lot of other serious medical issues that come with it. It would be. But it will give you sexual issues as well. So, is that body worth that much? I'm not saying everyone with yeah. a nice body mm -hmm. uses a steroids or testosterone. Yeah. Some people work hard for their bodies. Big ups to them. And we appreciate that, yeah. Yes. But the ones who play around with hormones and steroids, they know that they're asking for trouble. It's dangerous. Do you get at a certain point, like a woman, mm. I'm sorry that I'm jumping all mm. over here, I That's usually fine. do that, I, 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 I remember questions uh, as I flow. Mm. Um, a woman, mm. at a certain point, would go through what is called menopause. Mm -hmm. Men, it has been believed that they don't have this sickness, mm -hmm. or if you want to call it a sickness or condition, mm -hmm. but it has been believed that Utsumutus Lisa doesn't usually, or is not as much exposed to it. You being in this field, you being in this field. How would you explain? Does a man get to have menopause or go through that? We don't use the dramatic term with males that says menopause because menopause basically means you know when you're going through it. Because yeah. you have those hot flashes or whatever happens, then the next minute it's you, gone, you no yeah. way to know that you've menopause. Yeah. With males on the other, <clears> side, <throat> other side, at a certain age then their testosterone level starts going down slowly. Yeah. Biggest contribution is the lifestyle. So whenever mm -hmm. you paint when you were younger, it, it catches up with Get you out of here. Isn't that sad? Yes. So <laughs> people that are nice and healthy do your get the right when yeah. they're younger, they most likely will not reach menopause. Mm -hmm. So it, it, there, it, there are benefits in taking, obviously there would yes. be, in taking care of yourself while yes. you are growing because when you grow everything. Up, when you do things you're right gonna, when you're younger, you most happy. likely won't go through andropause. I need to start going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I need to start going to the gym. It, it works like that, eh? Yes, you need to gym, you need to be healthy, <coughs> yeah. you need to cut down on sugar, mm -hmm. you just need to have a healthy lifestyle, less alcohol, no smoking, yeah. Yeah. then <coughs> that will actually mean a better life. Better. It does, it does mean, and, and obviously it would, because all of those things are terrible. Mm. The, you, you've mentioned it twice, mm -hmm. you've mentioned salt, uh, sugar twice. Mm -hmm. I want to find out though, because it has also been said, Gutu is Saudi is, a, is, a, is an evil thing for a man, and uh, you'll get to your 39s, 40s, and you'll already start feeling the, 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 mm -hmm. that you were doing something wrong. Yes. How does it play a role, uh, no, Saudi? Salt is as bad as sugar. Yeah. Sugar will cause diabetes, mm -hmm. salt will cause hypertension and cardiac disease. Yeah. So, obviously, the diabetes that it plays with your vascular system. And you need your blood to flow. When then it makes amalone, it, 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 it makes some blood vessels that are big That's hard. salt. Yes, so both salt yeah, and sugar. Yeah, yeah. Then it will be compliant to what a vulege and a vulege. That's when you have yes, uh, those hypertension and um, hot flashes. That's when you could do have a Yes, then you have a problem with the erection because erection also needs the magic. Yeah, of course. Yes. And uh, it totally depends on what the blood is sending. If yes. the blood is sending but it's not getting to the destination, and, yes. then, people, and then a person will walk out of bed and say, you're, you're not woman enough anymore, I can't even get it up. What were you busy with? You know, all of these times. It's your issues, not the other person's issues. Yeah. So, in, uh, in all of these things that you cover in uh, the Blue Clinic, mm -hmm. what would be one of those uh, services that you say are most prominent that you've noticed the Wutabant you usually come in for? <clears throat> I've actually noticed the Wuti initially erectile dysfunction. I, I had special interest in sexual function. That's mostly right. Mostly erectile dysfunction. Yeah. And it was mostly for like my own cool because that's what we saw most of the time in state. Mm -hmm. We're getting a lot of old men with erectile problems, mm -hmm. most likely due to andro andropause, due to menopause. Yeah. But what I've seen right now with the shift to, you know, to the private sector, I've mm -hmm. realized that I'm getting 
patients as young as 18. Can you imagine? As young as 18, it's either, but there's a lot of abuse of yeah. testosterone. People abuse testosterone. It always comes back to that as it's, well. Most people abuse testosterone, but with other people, mm -hmm. it's generally a problem. They Something just, that maybe they, they inherited have, it, yeah. They don't have enough testosterone, or they just genetic, not genetically, due to certain issues, mm -hmm. they have a very high level of testosterone, and mm. it's giving them issues. Other things that a person can do to um, improve their sexual health um, as a man, maybe just besides going to the gym, which is obviously one of those things that any person has to do, but are there certain things that you would say, it's a definite that you have to do them, maybe some kind of foods, maybe some kind of exercises, because when I went through your page, <laughs> well, hey, wait a second, when I went through your page, I saw there was um, a picture with a man, mm. he was standing in a, in a position with his legs open, and it looks like he had some dumbbells mm -hmm. and they were tied with a string and I have no idea where the string, <laughs> I have no idea where the string was going, but it was obviously hanging on to something. Yeah. I wanna find out from you, which are these things that you would say they're very important. Mm -hmm. You have to eat this food, you have to do this exercise, it would help you if you do this. And what are the things that a person has to maybe also avoid? Mm -hmm. We, like all other diseases, we need to avoid things that will cause vascular like, problems. That's right. So low, low fat, mm -hmm. we need to avoid sugar, we need to avoid salt, that's traditional. Just eat healthy fruits and vegetables, not a lot of fat, just be basically healthy. Yeah. Yeah, but there are certain few vitamins, I'll put that in my, like, mm -hmm. in my, Insta, in my Instagram page. Mm -hmm. There are certain vitamins that are extra important mm -hmm. for sexual function. Yeah. So it is important to make sure that you get that in your, in your diet, so certain veggies and fruits, mm -hmm. but it's actually even safer to just get supplements, supplements yeah. in a safer way. And when it moves up to exercise, yes, not just hitting the gym and building chest and yeah. stuff. Yeah, there's other parts to be worked out. There is the pelvic <clears throat> floor, which is magic. Mm -hmm. And in the past, we believe that Kegel exercises are a female thing. Yeah, no, a man needs them. Males need Kegel exercises yeah. as well. Mostly, we have a lot of, in, when I say erectile dysfunction, mm. I actually mean it's issues with desire for That's sex. Right. It's issues getting it up. Mm -hmm. It's issues keeping it up. Keeping it up. Yeah. And most people who struggle keeping it up, yeah. it's actually because of they don't have enough control of their pelvic floor. Mm. So if you do those pelvic floor muscles, you have the ability of... Because basically it's the pelvic floor yeah. that holds the blood in your penis and it becomes hard. I'm also coming to a point where you would uh, talk about how a person has to do that. Sex on its own. Mm -hmm. It's more healthy to have sex more often than to have less of it. Yes, it's healthy. Not just for the fact that it's an exercise. Yeah. Sex is it is an exercise. It's, sweet, right? it's a good exercise. <laughs> it burns and calories. Your, your heart rate goes up. Yeah. It's a good exercise. It mm. is a good exercise. Yeah. But more than just, just sex being a good exercise, studies have shown that mm. it actually decreases chances of certain cancer. Is cancer. it now? Yes. Like prostate cancer, apparently people that are um, that are more sexually active mm -hmm. tend to have a lower risk of getting Oh, is it now? So sex if done correctly and safely mm. is a very safe. Beautiful stuff, mm. man. So this is what the Blue Clinic does and this is what you guys specialize in. The, the, the reason that uh, <clears throat> you would have come to a point in saying, I want to open the Blue Clinic, I want to start a clinic, what would be the cause of that? It was a matter of just males not getting enough attention, yeah. getting our help, and actually males knowing they have issues coming to us in hospital mm -hmm. and we have nothing to offer them yeah. that has been an issue for the longest time that they come in we just write something and give them to go you know, to, to go and most yeah. of the time they won't even follow it up it's a matter of them knowing that they can go to this one place because i know they get embarrassed yeah that i've, I've realized yeah. let them just get embarrassed this with this one person yeah. deal with the embarrassment here and get it over and done get it over and done it don't, you don't have to go here like in you don't have to go to those sessions parts. and sessions yes. and sessions. So, so it's a one it's a one stop shop yes. where you get everything and it's holistic and, in that way. And you know that everyone else who's there has mm. the same issues. So oh, so you can't judge. Judgment. Yeah, because I know yes. Wuti, in your traditional clinic or hospital where you would go, mm -hmm. she wants to say something this year. I know what it is. No, not a problem at all. I guess that's uh, the pleasures of uh, doing an interview at home because the angel is here. 
So, sorry, sorry. Not, not a problem at all. No, it, this is actually going to be special. She's going to be appearing in, the, in that video. I want to make sure that we're going to take a nice photo of her. I've actually got one already. Uh, As uh, we are drawing closer, closer, closer to, uh, to the end, because I think we've probably covered just about much, um, there's one other thing that uh, also came across when I was going through your, your, your information and doing the research. Mm -hmm. Penal, uh, penal or penal ulcers. Can you just help me with that one? How do you pronounce that and what is that? Penal ulcers basically mean there is a, 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 like there's an erosion mm -hmm. in the skin. Yeah. It's like in a slow basically. There's mm. an erosion in the skin and in the penis. Part of the uh, STI. It's an STI. But the penal ulcer, it's not just, it can be more than just an STI. Wow, no. Yes. You can present with an ulcer if you're given treatment, the sexually mm. transmitted, like the syndromic, yeah. chronic, syndromic management. Yeah. We give you treatment and it doesn't heal. Mm. Then it means there might be more to it. The infection has gone, has gone deeper. Oh, it's not just an infection. Mm. It might be a cancer. Because oh, most of the boy. cancers, that's how we pick them up. We give you, you treatment, heal. you don't heal, yeah. then we think it might be a cancer. Then at that point, we need to take a biopsy mm -hmm. to make sure that you don't have cancer. And uh, catch it before it gets worse. Yes. So looks like uh, treated earlier. Yeah, it looks like uh, the, the Blue Clinic has everything that a person would definitely need. Mm -hmm. huh? So it's uh, something that a person would definitely have to pay a visit and look forward to. I know, Guti, as we grow as men, <clears throat> and uh, I want to mention this because you actually uh, put it out there as a very good pointer. It's always easy to, 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 to look within yourself and say, I need help. But it's very hard to go and find that help when you have no idea where, where you're going to go. Mm -hmm. Or maybe when you're going to get to a place and you don't receive the kind of help that you need. This is also countered by the Blue Clinic because when you get there, mm -hmm. you get the whole spectrum of everything that has to do with male sexual health and just sex as a, as a, as a subject on its own. So, uh, Dr. Tamide, where do we find her? I know also you have on the social links, I know that you also have an office that you operate in. There's a lot of people that would want to know this information. How do people get through to you? I am on Instagram. Instagram, I'm at the.blue.clinic. Yeah. I'm on Facebook, The Blue Clinic by Dr. Tamile. Mm. Then my rooms are in Maxwell Center, yeah. which is a medical center next to City Hospital. Mm. My, okay, I'm in the second floor. I'm in the second floor, yeah. room 206. Room 206. Yeah. And our phone number is, that's what I have to copy. <laughs> no, 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 just read it. 031 309 And uh, your operating times and hours? We, we see patients every day, man, Monday to Friday, mm. from about 9 to about 3. Perfect. But we prepare people to have appointments. Yes, we do see walk ins, yeah. but for privacy reasons, People and for see, scheduling, pro yes, so that well. you will have yeah. enough time with you, and when you walk in and walk out, you'll be alone. So it's nice that when people make appointments, yeah. but we've started taking walk ins. Okay, perfect. As uh, you've heard, it, it's unfiltered with Oscar Somi, and uh, we have the beautiful uh, doctor just telling you the standard has actually gone skyrockets. Yeah. We have a doctor, and uh, she's uh, giving us a beautiful interview explaining what uh, the Blue Clinic does. It's her. She's the founder, it's a baby actually. She's uh, gone through the normal, I am going to be working. And uh, she got to a point where she was like, actually, I would love to carry on working, but can I do this on my own? And uh, because she had a special interest in male sexual health, she decided to actually go that route uh, to a point where she gave birth to the Blue Clinic and that is her baby. It is growing very well and it is uh, there for you to get all the help that you might encounter. It's a one-stop shop where you get everything that you need that has anything to do with male sexual health. So we definitely need to pay them a visit because these are actually terrible for marriages and terrible for relationships. You have this, it puts a lot of stress. You start having, you know, it just misses your whole aura. So you really need to have a good, healthy sexual health. So uh, Dr. Sabine, thank you so much for allowing us to come to your beautiful home. Oh. It's lovely. And uh, the fact that you took your time to speak to Unfilter, and I'm sure Dr. are gonna use the information on this podcast to actually come through to, you, uh, to, to, to the clinic and get the help that they need. Thank you thank so much again. Thank you for having me as well. Thank you, thank you of driving all the way to here. Yeah, thank hey. you. All right, thanks, mate. Cheers, all right, bye. I will say that's uh, about it. Wrapping it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's this>. Hi. <laughs> <laughs>